Hi, my name is Trish. In this video, I'll be talking about my favorite Junjita short stories. This is a video that I'm really excited to be doing. I've always wanted to do a Junjito related video on my channel before. I just didn't know how to. I was intimidated by just the sheer magnitude of his portfolio that I didn't even know where to start or what I will start talking about. But recently, there's been an announcement that Netflix will be releasing a series adaptation of Junjito stories. And I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to talk about my favorite short stories of this. I was first introduced to Junjito back when I was in college. The first Junjito story that I read was Uzumaki and it remains my favorite story of his to this day. I was instantly captivated by Junjito stories, but I came to admire him not only for his stories but also for his art. Alongside Fiona Staples, Phil Noto, Greg Capullo, Junji Ito was one of the artists that had the most influence on my art back in college and even until now. Junji Ito has this very deep understanding of human emotion, especially fear. He has this way of encapsulating this macabre, claustrophobic sort of horror that is prevalent throughout all his stories into his drawings. He knows how to draw things in a way that would evoke as much discomfort from the reader as possible. His art doesn't rely on gore to scare. The shock value of his art relies on the strangeness of it all. Junji Ito's storytelling is just as amazing as his art. I've said this to everyone I've ever recommended Junji Ito's stories before. Junji Ito's stories play on fear. Much like his art, Junji Ito's storytelling captures the strangeness of situations. His stories capitalize on playing with things that make people uncomfortable and expands on it. Junji Ito's stories are scary not for the shock value or the supernatural elements, but because you just can't wrap your head around it. Many of his stories rely on things not being normal, and most of the time his characters are put in situations that are inescapable. It's this sense of hopelessness that I think elevates the horror of his stories. So that was my commentary on Junjito and how much I love his work. Now let's get onto the list. So I've limited this list to one-shot, standalone short stories. I will not be including full stories like Gyo or Hellstar Remina. I will also not be including short stories that are connected to each other and basically form a full story. Stories like Uzumaki, Tommy, uh, Lovesick Dead, and Suichi's Diary of Curses. Because these short stories are connected to each other, reading each one to get the context of the full story is required. And I want this list to be a recommendation of stories that people can just consume individually without needing to read back on a connecting story. There are one-shot stories where a character appears multiple times in different stories like the Tales of Oshikiri and the stories involving the iconic supermodel. And because these stories tend to be standalones, I will be including them on this list. And finally, before we start the list, just allow me a bit of time to put out this disclaimer. I will be showing scenes and images from these stories on screen because personally I do not think I will be able to fully explain how much I love these stories without showing these some scenes at least. However, I want to reassure you that if you haven't read any of these stories, you will technically not be spoiled. Some of these scenes will give you a bit of insight to what is happening in the story, but I wouldn't count them as something that would completely spoil the story for you. And to be quite frank, the totality of experiencing a Junjito story is actually reading a Junjito story. So seeing these images will not ruin the story for you, trust me. And now let's start with the honorable mentions. The first honorable mention is The Window Next Door. This is a story about a young man whose room is right across from his mysterious neighbor who has taken a liking to him. This neighbor's advances quickly take a disturbing turn. This one is short and quick but managed to produce one of the most iconic scenes in Junjito's portfolio. This is also one of the stories that perfectly encapsulates what many of Junjito's stories are. Sometimes, Shitty things happen to people for absolutely no reason, and that's terrifying. 
The next honorable mention is Billions Alone or Army of One, I think is its other title. In the story, people disappear in quick succession and their bodies are found stitched together in a gruesome display. It's discovered that these disappearances and murders only happen when people congregate together, which forces people all over Japan to isolate themselves. This one is memorable just for the sheer magnitude of it. The illustrations are disturbing and vivid and stayed with me for a long time after I read it. And the last honorable mention is Fashion Model. This is a story of a group of young filmmakers who hire a couple of models for a project. One of these models, however, doesn't really fit the universal standard of beauty and they quickly find out that she's more than they bargained for. This was the story that introduced me to one of Junjito's most iconic characters, the infamous supermodel. She was definitely the showstopper in the story and if you've read the story, you'll know why what I just said was funny. Because she literally stopped the show. Anyway, <laughs> the supermodel is iconic and she's just as memorable in her, all her other stories as she was here. And now, an official ranking of my favorite Junjito short stories. In number 15 is Ice Cream Bus. This is a story about a mysterious ice cream truck that regularly visits a neighborhood, getting the kids extremely addicted to ice cream. The parents start getting concerned, however, when their kids start manifesting strange physical symptoms, like melting. The kids are melting. I love this story because it's so endearingly creepy. It's it's disturbing but absurdly so. Like the image of a child licking a pile of his melted playmates is traumatizing. It's traumatizing, believe me, but it's also just it's just so extremely ridiculous. I consider this one of his lighter stories in terms of tone that is. And number 14 is Face Firmly in Place. This is a quick story about a woman who goes to have a checkup and ends up trapped in a terrifying device drilled into her ears and holding her head in place. This is one of Junji Ito's more subtle works wherein there's absolutely no scary outside forces aside from the situation the character finds herself in. Most of the story takes place during the moments when the character is trapped and it's almost a panic-inducing experience. And number 13 is Slug Girl. Slug Girl is a story about a girl whose tongue turns into a slug. That's it. Quick, precise, and extremely disturbing, Slug Girl was one of the first short stories that I read and was definitely the short story that solidified Junjito's brand of horror for me. Technically, for me, it's not even a scary story. There's nothing frightening about it. It's just very uncomfortable and I love how far Junjito can push discomfort in such a short story. And number 12 is Gentle Goodbye. In the story, the main character is married into a family who has the ability to call back the spirits of their dead to live among them. Anxious for what will happen to her once her father passes away, the main character seeks to convince her in-laws to bring his spirit back when the time comes. This is one of Junjito's more poignant stories and to be honest made me sad more than scared. I think it shows how well Junji Ito understands human emotion and how masterfully he can misdirect and guide the reader through a series of emotions because I felt a lot while reading the story. And number 11 is The Human Chair. In the story, a woman suspects that her favorite chair houses someone sinister and her worst fears are realized after a string of disturbing circumstances. While illustrated by Junji Ito, this story was originally written by Japanese author Edogawa Ranpo. Fun fact, Edogawa Ranpo is a pen name inspired by another author of horror, Edgar Allan Poe. Get it? Edogawa Ranpo? Edgar Allan Poe. Anyway, The Human Chair is an atmospheric horror story that made me want to crawl into a hole and never leave. <laughs> There's just something extra scary about a story when it takes place inside someone's own home. It was terrifying, it made me uncomfortable, and those are my favorite kinds of horror stories. And number 10 is flesh-colored horror. A concerned teacher makes a home visit to check up on a troubled student and discovers that his beauty-obsessed mother is up to no good. A lot of Junjito's stories involve children, but this one in particular is special to me. I have to warn you though that this story deals with child abuse just in case you want to pick this up. The story, as shocking and disturbing as it is, is filled with good intentioned people who take action for the welfare of a child. And this element, combined with Junji Ito's creative take on body horror, makes for a very compelling story. 
In number nine is Next Spectre, one of the short stories in the tales of Oshikiri. After murdering his friend in a jealous rage, height conscious Oshikiri starts questioning his sanity when his friend's corpse continues growing to ridiculous lengths, threatening to expose his crime. This short story is trippy, probably one of Junjito's trippiest. I think following Oshikiri through his guilt-ridden perspective while he slowly sank into a delusional abyss was just as fun as it was terrifying. There's just something satisfying about someone incredibly unlikable getting their well-deserved comeuppance. In number 8 is Shiver. Yuji is disturbed to find that his neighbor is sick with an illness that results in countless holes showing up all over one's body. The same illness that took the life of his grandfather. After reading his grandfather's journal, Yuji and his friend find out that this illness might have more sinister origins. Aside from Uzumaki, this is one of the most talked about stories by Junji Ito, and for good reason. <laughs> I could never read this without my hair standing on end. The story is creepy enough. But personally, I think it was Junjito's illustrations that brought this story to its current infamy. He just dug into this idea of holes on a person's body and made it into a deeply disturbing story. In number 7 is Red Turtleneck. Tomio gets more than he bargained for when he leaves his girlfriend for another woman, who turns out to be a witch with a penchant for collecting severed heads. This is one of the most thrilling stories in Junji Ito's portfolio. This story shows clearly what I meant about Junji Ito playing with uncomfortable ideas and expanding on it. Like, holding up your own severed head to keep yourself from dying is already bad enough, but Junji Ito creates more scenarios to make this situation worse. You know, the tarot card, the cockroach, the suspense of finding out if Tomio makes it or not, it's, it's all a perfect concoction. And number six is Scarecrows. In this story, people People put scarecrows over the graves of their loved ones after discovering that they start to look like the deceased after some time. But faces aren't the only things these scarecrows bring back from the dead. And for those with unfinished business with the living, these scarecrows quickly turn into a nightmare. The whole concept of the story is just fascinating and as usual, Junjito's execution of it is unpredictable. Uh, shocking and frightening. This is another instance where his illustrations definitely carried the whole story. There's just something about how he drew those scarecrow's faces that made everything scarier than it already is. In number five is another iconic one, which is the long hair in the attic. After breaking up with her asshole boyfriend, Chiami decides to cut her hair after growing it out for years just to please him. But in an unfortunate series of quick successions, Chiami is murdered, beheaded, and her head is nowhere to be found. The story is one instance where Junji Ito actually relies on shock value to deliver fear, but it doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel like shock for shock's sake. His illustrations here are deeply disturbing, more on the gorier side than just the usual discomfort, and I think it's amazing how well Junji Ito can pull off both. And number four is Honored Ancestors. In this story, the main character, Risa, has just lost her memory. She starts developing an irrational fear of caterpillars, and this fear seems to be exacerbated every time she visits her boyfriend's house. This is one of the most memorable Junjito stories for me. It's a perfect balance of shock value and that subtle rising tension that he utilizes so well in his stories. The tension is almost unbearable because there's this sense of hopelessness to it, like you can't escape whatever bad thing is about to come. The shock value, however, is on another level. This story produced two of the most frightening, most disturbing scenes in his whole portfolio and even until now I cannot look at it without feeling unwell. Fun fact, Junji Ito was really proud of the scene where a character runs on all fours on his back but was disappointed to find out that a similar walk was done first in the director's cut of The Exorcist. Also, am I surprised that Junji Ito watches The Exorcist? No. In number three is the Enigma of Amagara Fault. Following a devastating earthquake, a fault was exposed filled with human-shaped holes. People all over the world start congregating to this fault and finding holes identical to their silhouettes. An unexplainable urge starts to overcome these people as, one by one, they enter the holes and into the abyss of the mountains. The Enigma of Amagara Fault is one of Junji Ito's most popular stories and personally, 
is the one I find the most disturbing and uncomfortable. It's uncanny and plays with existential and psychological themes very well. The tone of the story is somewhat apocalyptic <laughs> and what really scared me about the story is just how indecipherable it is. Like there shouldn't be any reason for these people to be going inside these holes and it's clear from the story that people are going in on their own volition despite their own fears and anxiety. The overwhelming need to just do it even though they didn't want to was what frightened me. <laughs> And number two is Hanging Blimp, or the other title will be Hanging Balloons. The world is plunged into chaos when giant balloons looking like actual people's heads start appearing in the sky and killing off the people they look like by hanging them. This is another somewhat apocalyptic story from Junji Ito and I absolutely love it for the sheer creativity for it. Who would ever think of giant sentient blimps killing off people? Junji Ito, that's who. This story is longer than most of his short stories and I love how every worst case scenario that could happen was shown to elevate the scariness of the situation. Like killer balloons aren't the most threatening things one would imagine and I love how Junji Ito set out to disprove that. And in number one, my most favorite Junji Ito standalone short story is Earthbound. A strange phenomenon starts happening in Japan where people suddenly stand still like statues in random places. The seemingly harmless act takes a disturbing turn when it is discovered that This is one of Junji Ito's more underrated stories, and compared to the subject matters and the magnitude that his other short stories deal with, I guess it's understandable. Like There are no monsters here, no supernatural elements, the story is tamer in tone, it doesn't have any grand gestures, and its shock value is very controlled. The shock value itself is not rooted in the strangeness of how these people are bound to the earth, but why these people are bound to the earth. Like the Enigma of Amagar Fault, Earthbound is contemplative and makes you think. For me, the most frightening thing about the story is how it mirrors reality because everyone is scared of facing the things they've done. So that is it for my favorite standalone short stories by Junji Ito. Please feel free to take this list as a recommendations list, but really, I would recommend all of Junji Ito's works to anyone who wants to read it. Each story is creative and unique, and if there's one thing to expect from Junji Ito, it's definitely the unexpected. So let's talk in the comments below. Have you read any of Junjito's works and what are your favorite of his works? That is it for me. I'm hoping to release more scary Halloween related videos before October ends. So I guess I'll see you on the next one. Bye!